Hello, you beautiful human. I am Xanthi, and today I have a very special guest, Amanda Vandergulik, who is from Cleverdale Kids and CleverdaleCakes.com, and otherwise known as my mom. And today I'm just going to be interviewing her a little bit on um, her sexuality and finding herself and her love story. So I hope that this helps you if you're trying to figure out your sexuality. And that is just a cute story. So Aww. we're going to first um, introduce you. If people don't know who you are, then they would like to know who you are probably. So <clears throat> we obviously know your name, Amanda Vander Gulick. Um, and what do you do? What is Clever Dough Kids and Clever Dough Cakes? All right, well, I educate people. Clever Dough Kids is helping parents teach their kids about money, specifically learning how to create passive income, doing things you already love doing. And Clever Dough Cakes is helping cake decorators come up with fun baking and yummy recipes and fun cake decorating ideas. And it's also the business I use to show the families how to earn passive income doing something they love to do. Mm -hmm. Great, and I love making cakes because we make cakes so good. She's a star in a lot of my cake decorating videos, so you've definitely got to go check her out. Leave her a nice comment. I'll leave her link in, in the description below. So, and um, where are you from? I am from here. Oh wait, <laughs> Oxbridge, Ontario. Yeah. And I'm from New Zealand. So kind of very much opposite, but that's okay. Ah, other sides. We of the travel. World. <laughs> it's fine. I grew up here. Clearly moved to New Zealand to have this beautiful girl and my brother and her brother, and then moved back here. Yep. So now into the juicy questions. Oh, juicy questions. I know. Okay. So, what age were you when you first met your now wife? And what, like, what grade? Okay. Well. We met in grade 9, but we really got to know each other better in grade 10. I was actually in a science class with her best friend and was invited to join them for lunch. And when I met my now wife, yeah, lovely feelings of just knowing I've connected with a soulmate and of course having no idea how on earth I was going to let her know that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit scary. I know. <laughs> Um, but thankfully she felt the same way, obviously, wife, so... Well, yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, and how long were you together? So, okay, so this was back in the 1980s, 1990s. And uh, so not exactly a time when it was safe or um, comfortable to be open about your sexuality in that time where everybody just insisted on telling you that you were going to hell and that you were going to ruin everybody's lives who were in your life. So yeah, not the best time <laughs> to connect with someone with the same sex, but you know. <laughs> so we were actually, we dated for about six years under radar. So we never told anybody, um, yeah, we constantly self-doubted ourselves, uh, thinking, well, this must just be a passing thing. Uh, it's really hard to accept yourself when you're different, when everyone around you and society around you is telling you you're an evil person, no matter how nice you are, no matter how much good you do in the world. It's, mm -hmm. It really, it works at your psyche when, uh, yeah, when the concept says, well, you're evil, and it's like, Okay. We're just trying to love someone. I know, I just, I always felt like, but shouldn't it just be our souls that are connecting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were together for six years and then we were separated for 17 years before we reconnected again in a time when it was actually a lot more acceptable. Mm -hmm. And well, I will probably get to this later, but uh, getting to the point where the community actually supported us so far as to help us get married so it's a pretty cool story yeah um yeah well, we will we'll get, get into that, into that yeah um <clears throat> so then like how old were you when you split up like at the beginning so we went through the our high school years together and we went through a couple of years with university and college together as well and uh, but things were just it was really hard it was really psychologically difficult and finally, I just, I, I refused to be under the radar anymore. My partner wasn't quite ready to be open. 
and I just I gave up. So I actually moved to Holland. <laughs> Let's just go somewhere. You know, else. when things get tough, I ran. <laughs> so I moved to Holland, and uh, I I lived there. Learned for, Dutch. Yes, yeah, so that was about when I was 21 years old, and I lived there for five years before moving to New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. And um, this is just kind of like to help um, people who are trying to figure themselves out. What is it that like made you know like I need to be with a woman? Like what's the difference between man and woman for you? All right, so I tried to kind of make my head okay with things. So I figured I'm just clearly bisexual if I'm attracted to both men and women. Because I'd, I'd had crushes on guys, like the majority of my crushes have always been on guys. To be honest, the only crush I've ever had on a girl was my wife. But having said that, I had crushes on guys because I was kind of trained to have crushes on yeah. guys, if that makes any sense. And uh, it, it only took me, what, 30 years to finally admit to myself that no, I am not bisexual. <laughs> I do not feel comfortable being intimately close with guys at all, but soul connection, spiritual connection, friendship connection is totally fine with guys. Just, um, yeah. Like the companionship is good, just not the intimate. They're great best friends. <laughs> they really are, guys are so great. They're great best friends, yeah. yeah. But no, I'm connected, attracted, yeah, to women, and specifically my wife. That's so cute. Okay, and then when you reconnected, um, you were, how old? I was nine. Yeah, you were just about to turn 10 years old. Yeah. We reconnected um, after 17 years. I honestly thought I'd never speak to her again because I figured she hated me because, well, I dumped her and I left the country. <laughs> so, you know, I there's mean, that. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but we, we decided to, to meet up for coffee. And both of us totally had that feeling of, oh dear, it's still there, which I already knew. I, I knew I had feelings. I just figured they would never be fulfilled. Like mm -hmm. that it would, just wasn't my path in life. And um, yeah, so it was, it was kind of amazing to have those feelings still there and like just as strong as ever. But it was also tremendously scary because it had consequences. Yeah. And it had the consequence that it meant breaking up a marriage, um, I had I had married uh, um, um, a very nice gentleman who is your father yeah. and a uh, lovely soul was my best friend and uh, yeah definitely a lot of self-doubting involved with that and uh, just so grateful that I did have that time mm -hmm. together I think we raised two amazing kiddos and uh, but yeah finally having to admit to myself okay as teenagers we were not allowed to be together and that was out of our hands um, to the point where I was even sent to a different high school for a while, and um, yeah, it was it was not fun. But then reconnecting 17 years later and realizing we're adults now, we actually get to choose our own lives now, and our parents aren't in charge, society's not in charge, like we have to take that responsibility. And I thought, well, no, I can't do that. And it honestly, it felt like my soul was being pulled out of my chest, going, you better follow me or I'm just going to leave you. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. okay, <laughs> I guess I gotta follow my soul. So hardest time of my life was, yeah, having mm -hmm. to break up with your dad. And uh, I'm incredibly happy that he's happy again. So yeah, yeah. He, has a, he has a lovely wife. So exactly. Yeah. And feeling Finally, I got to the stage where I actually liked myself again. Um, again, like I had a wonderful marriage, and uh, but I felt I, I hated myself. And that's something for somebody out there who's trying not to be who you are because you think there's something wrong with you. Being not who you are has a lot of physical effects on your body. Stress does horrible things to your body and admitting to yourself, not to everybody else, but to yourself who you truly are and then following that, oh, it's such a relief, <laughs> it's so much better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know what, just understand who you are now instead of having to live like a double life. Um, I don't regret any of it because it was still a wonderful life. I'm just happier being completely myself regardless of 
additional struggles that may have come along the way because of all the changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, not nice for you guys to have to be separated, but luckily we have shared custody, so you still yeah. get to see both of We get to see. And Xanthi's always been really positive. She's always just been like, oh, well, now I have more families. Well, so she's the, awesome. the best part was because, like, when she told my brother and I that um, they were going to split up and that she um, is gay or has a girlfriend, and I was like, Wait, that's a real thing? I know. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Here I am worried. Oh no, she's going to hate me. I think you've ruined my life. You're splitting up my family. And she's not even thinking about no, it. No, I was like, totally like... Wow, it's it's okay that I like girls because I've liked girls and I didn't tell anybody I liked girls. And, <laughs> and now my mom says she's got a girlfriend, so... Oh, thank you. With that math, I think I could be gay too. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then you had to deal with things... because. Um, people always have ideas they always have stigmas mm -hmm. and so they're like oh well you're just gay because you're trying to be like your mom like really what kid is trying like, to be you... like their mom <laughs> first of all why would you choose to be gay because you're gonna be a minority <sighs> it's not something you choose as much as people love but, to I mean, say i like being gay yeah it's pretty great but it is kind of funny how everybody's always like oh it's a choice it's a lifestyle no it's not <laughs> if it was a choice like who would purposely choose to live a difficult life yeah literally <laughs> right so. i mean at least because for me i was well born like in the 2000s so that also helped and you know i have a mom who's gay so like it was easier for me to like be able to say yeah that's okay yeah so like you still have a lot of stigma and social things that you have to deal yeah. with but at least you've got a family that's supportive of you and, mm -hmm. and that's one less thing to worry about so yeah, for sure yeah and so now okay we get into the wedding thing <gasps> the wedding thing <laughs> so we were living in Uxbridge for how many years oh goodness yeah, six, about six or so. Yeah, with um, her now wife. Yeah, and I kept telling them, "You have to get married. You have to get married." She was very persistent. <laughs> so, when are you guys getting married? <laughs> so, are you getting married today or tomorrow? <laughs> Which, like, yeah, she she's really relentless. She does not give up. <laughs> and then we heard on the radio that they were doing this giveaway um, for one lucky bride to have like paid, for, well, a free dress, mm. right? And hair and makeup and a venue and a uh, cake? Or was it food? No, yeah, a cake and uh, the minister, like pretty much a whole wedding package. Yeah. Okay, so backtracking a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, my wife and I had already decided we wanted to get married. We just couldn't didn't quite do it. it yet. It wasn't in our budget yet. And, uh, but we were already engaged. We just didn't have a date or, or anything else. And it was going to take a couple more years. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything that we were in a rush to do because, well, we didn't well, want like, to go into massive debt to do it. So <laughs> we weren't going to do that. And then, yeah, there was this there was this contest on our radio, our local radio station. And like Sandy said, they were giving away a wedding dress. They were actually giving away six wedding dresses. Yeah. There was a local wedding dress um uh, store and she she was starting this uh, wedding competition or contest not competition yeah. <laughs> wrong word competition, competition. whose wedding I'm is the better best bride. <laughs> no okay <laughs> so a, a contest to give away six wedding dresses in six different sizes so that it would help anybody in in a different dress size and then she decided to connect with other stores and services in our local area and see if they wanted to join the contest. So they ended up having one main prize. So six women were going to win a wedding dress and one of the bride-to-be were going to win an entire wedding. And uh, so that was pretty crazy. Yeah, and like perfect timing too. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, well, there's no way. <laughs> but... Um, a couple of years before that, I had actually ended up in a coma and uh, struggling. It's quite um, opportune that we're talking about this right now with the coronavirus yeah. and everybody worrying about lung issues. I am a lung patient mm -hmm. and I survived a, a really severe pneumonia and acute respiratory distress syndrome. And our whole town at the time were very supportive that people were dropping off groceries on our doorstep. Toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, toilet paper. We could use toilet that paper. now. No, okay. and, right, we, we even call some of our friends, we call them the toilet paper fairies because yeah. they, they dropped off groceries. <laughs> with toilet paper for us and but everybody was just so incredibly supportive 
so when this a couple years later I'm still recovering and still yeah struggling daily with, <laughs> with dealing with a new lung disability as you can tell I'm getting tired and so when this wedding co contest came up we were absolutely shocked mm -hmm. at the amount of people who nominated us and it was just crazy and well, amazing and then we actually won. We we won the wedding. So the Even, town, yeah. yeah, the town that I was so afraid of as a teenager, who kind of at that time the society pushed us down under the radar, ended up being the town, the community that helped me get married to my wife. And it, it just amazing. And it was wonderful because it showed our families how much support we had, mm -hmm. which was one of their biggest fears, which is totally understandable. As a parent, you're afraid of your child being gay or lesbian or transgender because it's, you're not even so afraid of the, the actual being that kind of a person, that sexuality. You're more afraid of how difficult their life is going to be. So I think by showing our family that we had so much support in our community, it just it gave them such a relief all right, our girls are going to be okay. Yeah. And it's been amazing. And um, even the radio guy who like announced it um, said that they had like this debate on like who is winning. And they're like, oh, but like they're gay and like do we not want to do that? And then the, the guy's like, yeah, why not? They won. Like, no that's issue. totally like, why? What are you even talking about? And it was a <laughs> unanimous um, vote, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just the fact that they, they were like, you know what? We are ready to take on any consequences if people are angry that you that we were letting a gay couple win. Um, and nobody did. They never had any problems. Everybody was very supportive. I suppose the only downfall is that uh, everybody knows us in town. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's it's wonderful. It is a small town. Yeah, so. I mean, we miss going shopping because it was kind of our run into people all the time. So we definitely miss that social aspect of things right now. But in a few months, hopefully. Yeah, we'll and and we just know that we're still connected, even if we're not personally connected. Mm -hmm. Like we are clearly closer than six feet apart right now, but we live in the same home and we've yeah. been here for weeks together in in our own um, quarantine. So. Yeah. We know that we're pretty We're okay together. And I guess the last thing I want to say is, is there any advice mm. for young people or even older people who are trying to like figure out themselves and like feel comfortable uh, with themselves? Honestly, just believe in yourself. Like seriously, go to your mirror and write on it, I am enough. <laughs> And she did look this at it to my mirror. I did it That's to all the mirrors in our house. Yeah, <laughs> I even wrote it on our TV. It's still there, <laughs> like on the top. I am enough because you are enough. You are enough exactly how you are right now. And be true to yourself. And if you don't know what yourself is yet, give yourself time. Like, don't worry. Don't stress. Just enjoy every minute that you have on this earth and just be as open and as honest as you can, but keep safe. If you know you're not gonna be in a safe environment, then you need to take precautions. Find groups that are there to support you. Find your local GSA. If you don't have one on, um, locally, find a GSA group on Facebook yeah. or, you know, Find something that's going to be supportive and and stop watching the news. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Choose what's going in your mind, believe in yourself, and really focus on just loving yourself because once you do, everything else falls into place. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for being in it. I will, um, at the end of this video, it will be a link on the screen for her channel, so go Aww. check that out. Thank um, you so To help with, like, if you're bored, you know, watch some cake <laughs> videos. Especially the ones that have you in them. She's so adorable. She's sneaky, I, too, when she's cake decorating and baking and tasting. <laughs> Mostly rainbow cakes right now is my trend because, you know, rainbows. Well, you know, there's that. Rainbows are pretty good. Thank you so much. No problem. I'll see you next week. Have a lovely day. Bye.